I'm Johnny Scoville, and this is Chase the Eat. Blazing Asian. It's my fifth take. Can't say it. Blazing Asian. There we go. All right, this is really cool. This, as seen, this is made with the 7-Pot Primo, as seen on Super Hot. This is the sauce by Ray and Bobby that was selected by Church's Chicken. So I've got a story for have I got a story for you. Oh, come on. We got two cactus peckers. I've never seen two on the same cactus. Yeah, they're pecking the cactus. Unbelievable. Oh, that was only one. It is what it is, people. All right, so listen, let me read you this story. Uh, or uh, let me tell you the story. First of all, Super Hots, the spicy world of pepper people. I had an opportunity. I was very, very fortunate to be in that. And uh, one of the episodes in it, uh, Church's Chicken is there. It's an amazing. Church's Chicken is awesome. Ooh, good stuff coming from Church's Chicken. However, they wanted to spice up their menu because they needed it. And uh, they're, they're just a great group of people. The CEO Joe is awesome. At any rate, we had this contest during the show. If you saw the show, you saw it. It was a legit thing. It was a real contest. And the winner got a contract with Church's Chicken. Bobby and Araya won with Blazing Asian. You have no idea. I should upload the funny takes. I had a hard time saying Blazing Asian. Say that five times fast. Anyhow, um, it was really, it was a beautiful thing. It was a, a, a wonderful thing to be a part of that uh, show. I'm going to read you this ingre the ingredients here. And, uh, well, first let me read you a little bit of what it says on the back of the bottle. Hi there. We are Bobby and Araya, online pepper pals that eventually became real life best friends. We share a passion for gardening and had dreams of starting a hot sauce company together. One day uh, we finally met in person thanks to a TV documentary called Super Hot, uh, where we got to uh, the encouragement to move forward with our plans to start our journey. So here it is, our first recipe, proudly created by Araya. Blazing Asian hot sauce is a vibrant, and it is, uh, flavorful condiment that combines a delightful blend of South Asian flavors to create a unique taste experience. This hot sauce is characterized by bold, zesty profile with a perfect balance of heat, tanginess, and umami. What a great word, umami. Beautiful. Let me give you the ingredients now. Tell you what, let me do this. Oh, you know what? Here's the deal with the ingredients. I took the picture wrong. I should have taken it this way. Give me a second. Enjoy the silky smooth sounds of the cactus woodpecker. Okay, now, all right, so here we go. The ingredients are water, rice wine vinegar, uh, which is rice water, uh, pears, it has, uh, which is pears water, pear juice concentrate. It has white miso, which is whole soybeans, rice, uh, sea salt, water, koji spores. Carrots, yellow onions, garlic pepper, mash, seven pot primo, which is always good. Distilled vinegar, uh, gochujang, which is rice water, corn syrup, red pepper powder, salt, soybean, alcohol in it, uh, which is obviously cooked off. Wheat extract, soy seasoning, soybean, wheat gluten, salt, alcohol, yeast extract, maltodextrin concentrate, garlic juice, uh, koji starter, lemon juice, sesame oil, Candied ginger, ginger cane sugar, uh, red li hing uh, mi, red li hing mi, mi, mui. Listen, I'm doing the best I can, people. Working without a net here. I think this is easy. Uh, lemongrass, there, that rounds it up. Uh, that will do it for the ingredients. And now, we're gonna taste this thing. So it was really fun to be on that show, and uh, Bobby and Ray are great. They they've become good friends of mine. I had a lot of fun uh, filming with both of them. Ray is hilarious. She's a very funny sense of humor, and Bobby's great too. Bobby and I had I shot I spent more time on set with Bobby 
than I did with Araya, but I would have liked to have spent more time with her. She's really fun. All right, so let's uh, do the aroma test here, people. Ooh, are things going on? This is one of those sauces. It has that... It's got that Asian aroma. That kind of, If you smell it, you say, ah, it's kind of an Asian feel to it. It has... Um, it has a complex aroma. Meaning, you can go in there and every time you go in there, you're going to sort of pick up... You'll kind of pick up something different. The second I'm out, it's really funny. The minute I do the videos, it becomes a bird sanctuary. Unbelievable. You'd be the... Yeah. And I'm not a bird dude. I mean, I like animals. But I can't, couldn't look at why well, I can look at a, like a cardinal and say, hey, it's a cardinal. Or now the California quail. Um, however, there are a lot of birds. Like, I have no idea what that little thing is right there. But, and, or that right there. It's short and fat. It's, I'm not mocking, I'm not fat shaming the bird. But it's really short and wide. And it's little. But it's wider than it is tall. Very cool looking bird. I wonder what that was. Great aroma. All right, here we go. Blazing Asian. You know how bold that is at this point in the video to try that name again? I did five takes, four or five takes in the beginning because I couldn't say it right. Here's the pour, people. Look at that. If you haven't been to Church's Chicken lately, you need to. All right, Blazing Asian. Boy, there you go, Bobby and Ray. I'm Johnny Scoville, and this most certainly is Chase the Heath. It's a, it has a lot, it's a, listen, it's a complex sauce. There's a lot going on in the flavor. But what I'll tell you is this, the seven pot is absolutely lovely. But what you get on the finish I'm not even sure what that is. The finish is so unique. The texture is amazing. It, the, the seven pot is, is there, but it has that Asian feel. And this is sort of like a, I kind of view it as kind of like an Asian, ah, wrong way of word. Let me see how I can word this. It's almost like Bobby and Reyes. Here, you know how sriracha isn't really a hot sauce? It's kind of like just a, kind of like a condiment. This is more of like that. It's like a condiment. You can put this as like a replacement for ketchup. You can put this on just about anything. Really is lovely. Now, as far as the heat on this, um, if you're not a chili head, it'd be pretty warm. Not to say you couldn't eat it, but you'd have to go sparingly, or it would be it'd give you a handful. There's that. The bird. Where'd it go? Oh, I lost it. It's really. It's here for you, bird people. It's really short, dark back feathers, and really white, plump, wide ch chest. And it looks like it's all chest because it's so it's white and it sticks out. It's wide, it's short and really wide in front, and its chest sticks out, white and black wings. Anyhow, lovely sauce. So here's your charge. Go to go to Church of Chicken. It's a great place. It's great chicken, and this is a dipping sauce. So congratulations to Bobby and Araya. It was super fun to be in that show with them. It really was. All right, so getting back to our, our uh, the greatest grossing albums in the history of rock and roll. We're going to do five more today. This is great. We're back to the Beatles again. You had another going to appear on the list a bunch, the Beatles. 1967 to 1970. Um, this was released in 1973, and it did 17 million copies. So listen, we previously mentioned that the counterpart released to the Red Album, here it is, and they refer to it as the Blue Album. Uh, and in addition to the Beatles, um, hits uh, from the Magic Mystery Tour. Magic, what a great, the Magical Mystery Tour. If you, got, you know what's really funny? It's surprising, it's surprising to me how many young people don't know who the Beatles are. But it's good stuff. If you haven't checked in, check it out. Pretty good stuff. Magical Mystery Tour, Sgt. Pepper's, 
Um, that was penned by Lennon and McCartney. The Blue Album includes music by George Harrison, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, which is, oh, is that a beautiful song? And Octopus's Garden, another classic. Uh, that, that's a uh, Ringo Starr song. Unlike its companion album, this album reached number one on the Billboard's top LP and the tape chart in the United States. In, uh, in the end, it's usual. Uh, it's usually a matter of preference among Beatles fans as to which collection is better, so why not celebrate them both? All right, this is one, another amazing... You know what this is? You know what we're reading here? If you're my age, I'm reading you the soundtrack of our lives. That's what it is. If you're my age, depending on where you grew up and what kind of music you listen to, but this is, a lot of this is, like, it doesn't even matter. There's so many crossover hits from rock to, like, like Elton John, all right? Greatest hits, Elton John. Released in 74, 17 million copies. Among all the greatness of Elton John and longtime working partner Bernie Taupin, amazing Bernie, um, have produced, have you ever seen The Family Guy? If you haven't seen Brian, when they have him dressed up as, as Bernie, it's amazing. Anyway, uh, it still rates as the, as the legendary entertainer's best-selling record in the U.S. There's also another collection of classic rock songs that seems it should be, um, that should be owned by anybody who's a fan of Sir Elton. He is a, a knight. Sir Elton or pop traditional rock in general. The top ten album uh, covered... Uh, uh, Elton John and Taupin's work from 1970 to 75, featuring legendary legendary tracks like Your Song, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, and Ber uh, Benny and the Jets. Unfortunately, the record is out of print, but John, uh, Elton John has released several other greatest hit packages in the following years. All right, the next one... Um, Born in the USA... Bruce Springsteen, the boss. 1984, 17 million copies. Now listen, through 1975's Born to Run, uh, it made the boss the established rock star. Born in the USA um, is his most iconic album, though. Um, solidifying his place among the true entertainment giants of all time, and uh, all time for that matter, from uh, of the time and all time for that matter, sorry. Uh, from the top 10 singles to the memorable cover art, which was amazing, uh, Born in the USA is an unforgettable piece of work, even though many still don't get that this is not a flavor. You know what? Everybody thinks that Born in the USA is like patriotic flag-waving song. Uh-uh. It's not. Uh, the pop-fueled MTV-friendly Dancing in the Dark sold uh, Springsteen to the mainstream masses, while deeper cuts like No Surrender, Working on the Highway, and Bobby Jean take fans to his rugged early years. Um, I used to be a huge fan of Bruce Springsteen. Got a wife and kids in Baltimore, Jack. I went out for a ride and I never went back. The River, you got to be kidding me. So I, I, there was a time where I was the biggest, the biggest Springsteen fan. I really was. But then what happened is, no, I'm not going to even talk about it. Next up is a classic album, such a classic, Boston, self-titled track. Boston is the name of the album. 1976, all right? Bicentennial year. Surprised you didn't know that. 17 million copies sold. Listen to this. At the time, Boston's self titled first release. Talk about a first release. Think about that. One of the great first release albums of all time. Oh my gosh. Self titled first release was the best selling debut album ever. However, it was quite the journey just to get interested in making the innovative and bombastic project which was the brainchild of MIT student turned rocker Tom Schultz. Tom Schultz is a genius. Uh, and added by uh, late Boston uh, voice Brad Delp. All right, thanks to memorable guitar-driven hits, more than a feeling, peace of mind, and foreplay, long time. What a great song that is. The album is estimated to have sold more than 20 million internationally, thanks to those songs that remain staples of classic rock radio on the traditional formats and satellite arena. I think there's one more I'm going to read. It, uh, there is. There's one more in this one, then we're going to stop. But that, Tom Schultz, let me tell you something about Tom Schultz. Like, he's done more for music. Like, I don't mean making it, but I mean the 
the science behind it, he's a genius. For real. He, he created a, pro, a product that was around in the 80s called the Tom Schultz Rockman. And it was a about that big. It looked like a Sony Walkman, but a little bit bigger. About that wide. And it was a, uh, a little portable uh, amplifier. You could wear on your belt, plug your guitar in. It had batteries, you know, but it, and you could put your earbud, earphones on and not offend anybody. <laughs> Play wherever you wanted. Kind of walk around with it. And it was called the Rockman. It was so amazing that there are bands that use that Rockman as like an, for effects, um, pl plugging through their their amps because the sound on the Rockman was so legendary. There's a, I have a new one called Metal Ace, which is for heavy metal. And I, a couple years ago, I found one of the vintage ones from the 80s, still in the box and papers. So I bought, it was like 300 bucks. But I bought it, I haven't touched it. I won't touch it just because it's such a classic thing. But Tom Schultz, really just, what a mind. All right, uh, now the last one uh, for today is such a classic. I'm kind of surprised uh, it only did 18 million. Appetite for Destruction. GNR, baby, 1987. Back in the summer of 1987, hair glam metal was filling FM radio days and nights on MTV. This came to a deliciously raunchy, dirty, raw day. Uh, this came, excuse me, then, I can't see. This is, you're going to make this a little bit bigger. Then came this deliciously raunchy, dirty, raw debut from a band of misfits ready to take over the rock world by blowing the doors off the mainstream music scene. You know what? They really were. It was a pretty crazy debut album. Um, complete with Axl Rose's snarling and searing vocals, Slash's ma master moments on the Les Paul, and favorites Welcome to the Jungle, Sweet Child of Mine, and Paradise City, Appetite for Destruction reached number one on the Billboard 200. It's a hard-charging, emotional journey from start to finish that still is intense today as it was 35 years ago. 35 years ago. Here's the thing about that, man. Wow, what a great band, great album. Um, a lot of people don't know this. The first out, the first tour that they did, the Les Paul, the Gibson Les Paul that uh, Slash played was a replica, was an authentic Gibson. Funny thing about it is the guy who made that fine one, they're worth like 40 grand, 50 grand, super expensive. He made a, a very, very limited number of, I have an eyelash or something in my eye. It's bumming me out. Listen, in the description box, Blazing Asian. You realize how gutsy that is after this long a video to drop that again? Cause that's what screwed me up on all the, Blazing Asian. Now I'm just getting cocky. In the description box, you're gonna see a link. Try this sauce, it's really great. Go to Church's Chicken, really amazing. In the description box, you're going to see a link for them. Pretty cool stuff. Check it out. Right there is my son, Johnny Scoville Jr. Right there is Tommy Scoville, my brother. Right here is uh, all the challenges I've done. Right here is pepperology. A lot of good stuff for beginners. I have a really cool pepperology video I'm doing today. You guys need to watch. I'm Johnny Scoville, and this was Chase the Heat.